This is Math 142, and we are into the second part of Section 8.1, and we're dealing with polar equations now. Last time we talked about polar coordinates, those, those points that are in that form, r theta, and then we came up with all of these relationships to relate polar equations to rectangular equations. So we have rectangular equations, uh, or, or points, coordinates really. They come in the form x, y. So what we're used to doing is writing equations like y equals x squared and knowing that that's a, a parabola. So what we can do is we can write equations in, for, in terms of r and theta, the ways that r and theta are related to each other. And that'll give us a whole, uh, a whole group of shapes as well. And if these are getting sticky for you to remember, just remember that definition of polar coordinates where this rotation is theta, this distance is r. And then we have all of our trig relationships to get us here and here. This distance, which is x, is r times cosine theta. And this distance uh, right here, which is y, that's r times sine theta. And then you can see how all of these fall out of that. Pythagorean theorem here, those that we showed. And if you go tangent the angle, it's opposite over adjacent, or y over x. All right, so let's take an equation r equals theta. And let's think about that equation for a second. It's telling us that r is theta. So when theta is 0, r is 0. Or when theta is uh, pi over 2, r is pi over 2. R, r is theta. So notice as theta increases, r increases. So as our angle of rotation gets bigger, our distance from zero gets bigger. This distance out here gets bigger. Can you visualize what that, what that would make if we graph it? Well, fortunately, we have Desmos, and um, you can write things in terms of r and theta when it's in rectangular coordinates, but I'm gonna put this into polar coordinates. So this one right here, and then I'll, I'll graph it. So it was r equals theta. You can just type out the theta to get it. And so notice this range goes from 0 to 12 pi. So this went around six times, right? I could zoom out as you get this spiral. It stops there because that's 12 pi. You can make it go further. Like if I made it go 20 pi, it goes out even further. So there's a range in here. If you're ever, if you're ever graphing things in Desmos and it doesn't feel like it's the whole thing, look at that range for what theta could be. Let's take a peek at this as it rotates around. So notice that as our angle is getting bigger, the, uh, the distance from the, from the origin is getting bigger. I'll put this somewhere where I can write on it. So for example, if I look at this point right here, notice that that angle is pi over three, the rotation is pi over three, but then this distance from zero to there is also pi over three. Or if I look at this point right here, Notice that rotation right there is pi, right? So this is rotated pi. So this distance should also be pi. There's two, two and a half, there's three. That's about pi if this, this ring right here is three, right? Two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. It looks like it's at about pi. So that should be the point in rectangular coordinates, negative pi zero. Let's check it out. So I'll turn this back into rectangular coordinates. I'll try and graph that point. Yeah, right there. Because, and again, notice this is not in polar form. This is in rectangular form. Back negative pi up and down zero. Desmos won't graph polar, polar points. So let me go back to polar. So there's lots of different things you can graph here. And, and next time we'll, we're going to uh, kind of investigate them. Like I could graph something like... Um, r equals 2 theta or, or sine of 2 theta. And you can see you start to get some pretty interesting shapes. And like I said, next time we'll investigate this a little bit. If you want to play around with it, it's kind of fun to do. And things like that. Anyways. I'm curious about going back and forth between rectangular equations and polar equations. So for example, if I look at this uh, y equals x squared. That's in rectangular, and I know if I graph that in rectangular,
gives me a parabola that looks like that. And again, Desmos will let me change the graph paper, but keep the graph. I can go either, either way. So if I wanted to write something in polar coordinates that would match that exactly, I can do some substitutions. So for example, y is equal to r times sine theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that in for the y. And um, x squared, x is equal to r cosine theta. So I can substitute that in for the x. So now all I need to do is clean this up a little bit. I have this r sine theta. If I square this, these are multiplied together. So they both are getting squared. So I have an r squared and a cosine squared. Now, when I write polar equations, they're going to be of the form r equals. They're going to be solved for r. So I'm going to do a little bit of manipulation here to get r all alone. Um, let's see. I could divide both sides by sine theta to get it. No, how about I divide both sides by cosine squared? So notice over here, it divides out. And that will leave me with r times sine theta over cosine squared theta equals r squared. And if I want this solved for r, I could divide both sides by r. Notice if I do that, I'm just going to switch. This is going to be on the, the left-hand side now. So r squared over r is just r, and that's equal to sine over cosine squared. So it should be that. Let me graph that and see what happens. Yeah, notice they're the same. Yeah, exactly the same. Good. And this this interesting to me about this sine over cosine squared, I could leave it like that. And remember, there's some ambiguity with, with polar coordinates often. I could also write this as, let me think of this as sine over cosine times 1 over cosine. So sine over cosine is uh, tangent. And uh, 1 over cosine is secant. I could write it as that as well. And they're the same thing. And that's what it's like going from rectangular to polar. You, you, you substitute in these values, the r cosine theta and the r sine theta, for x and y. And then you just solve for r. Get it all alone. And if you get it to this point, that's far enough. If you want to take it to there, that's fine as well. On a, on a test, if you got to here and then you tried to get it to here but made some mistakes, I would still give you credit for it. Like you, you got it to there. That's good. All right, let's do another one from rectangular to polar. And I'm going to actually start on the right-hand side here and move back to the left. So let me do this one first. So I have x squared equals 4y. So again, what I'm going to do is get rid of x and y. So I'm going to substitute in the r cosine theta and the r sine theta. Once I'm in polar coordinates, there should be no more x's or y's. Once I go from rectangular to, to polar, there's no more x's or y's in the, in the equation. There's, there's just r's and thetas. And then again, in polar equations, I need to solve for, for r. I need to get r into the, get it into some form where r is equal to something. So x squared is, uh, would be r cosine theta squared. For, and for the, the y, I'm just going to substitute in the r sine theta. And if I square this, again, these are multiplied together, so this would be r squared times cosine squared theta. Now all I have to do is get r all alone, get it so there's a single r. So I'm going to divide both sides by r. r squared divided by r is, is r. And I'm also going to divide both sides by, by this uh, cosine squared. That's right here. So cosine squared, cosine squared. And this is then going to equal 4 times sine theta over cosine squared theta. And you start to kind of see it's sort of a trend or a pattern with these parabolas in polar. Um, and we, we could stop here if you wanted. I'm going to go a little further. I'm going to think of this as 4 times um, sine over cosine times 1 over cosine theta. And I know that um, sine over cosine is tangent. 1 over cosine is secant. Ooh, that's tight. All right, and so notice this is it. r equals that, or r equals that. No x's or y's. It's all for r. 
All right, let me do this next one, same idea. Um, x squared minus y squared equals 9. So uh, I'm going to substitute in the r cosine theta and the r sine theta for x and y. Then I'm going to square each of these. And again, they're multiplied together. So it's r squared cosine theta minus r squared sine squared theta cosine should have been squared, equals 9. And now, this one, the technique's a little different. In order to get this r all alone, I see that these both have an r squared in them, so I'm going to factor an r squared out. So if I factor out an r squared on the left-hand side, I get cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta equals 9. Now, if this was cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, it would be a 1. But it's not. It's that minus that. So I'm still working to get r all alone. Um, this is r squared times that. So I'm going to divide both sides by that. And by that, I mean cosine squared minus sine squared. And then since it's r squared, if I square root both sides, I end up with r equals the square root of 9 is 3. And then this, I can't just square root both the cosines and the sines because of that subtraction. So I'll just write this as cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. I'll clean it up a little bit so it looks a little bit neater. And so there it is, this hyperbola, right? Because it's but they're both squared and it's subtracting, would look like that. All right, let's do this next one. x squared plus y squared is 16. Um, we know that makes a circle center at zero, zero. So I could do a couple of different things here. I could substitute in the r cosine and the r sine. Like if I do that, it's going to be, since I would square them both, I would have r squared cosine squared plus r squared sine squared equals 16. Factor out the r squared. That's, that's a one. So this is r squared equals 16, or r equals 4, which is interesting. Uh, I'm going to talk about graphing that in just a second. I want to show you another way to get there um, from here to here, and that's to recognize that this relationship is in play. We have an x squared plus y squared, and that's just equal to r squared. So I could take this and just substitute an r squared in for it and get straight to this step right here. Now this r equals 4, if I think about that as a graph, um, the radius is 4. And it's a circle with radius 4. Since theta isn't mentioned at all, it's what's called a free range variable, which I think is a very funny name. Um, but this free range variable means theta can be anything, but r is always 4. So as theta runs through all of those angles, theta is pi over 6, theta is pi over 3, pi over 4, r is fixed at this 4 value. Let's go the other way now. So I'm going to give you the polar equation, and I want it as a rectangular equation. So we want r and theta gone entirely, and we want only in terms of x and y's. Now, I'm not going to ask you to solve it for y. You don't have to get into a y equals form. You can just basically do the substitutions, and then you're good from there. So we'll be doing all of our manipulations on the polar side of this. So notice that the things that I'm going to be able to get out, get out of this from would be if I had an r cosine theta, an r sine theta, or an r squared, right? Because then I can substitute straight into x's and y's from those. So in this one, I have an r and I have a sine theta. So I actually don't have anything that I can do a straight substitution from. But I know if this was an r sine theta, that would be a y. So I think what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by r. And notice if I do that, r times r is r squared. And then over here, I have an r sine theta, which is great because I know what r squared is. It's x squared plus y squared. And I know what r sine theta is, it's y. Done. It, it's in rectangular form. I don't need you to manipulate it to solve it for y or for x. We're good. So we're going to do our manipulation, like I said, in polar, and then we'll do our transfers over. So if I look at this next one, 
it's in a similar form. R equals 2 times cosine theta. I've got an R, got a cosine theta. I'm going to multiply both sides by R again. And if I do that, on the left-hand side, I got R squared. On the right-hand side, I have 2R times cosine theta. And I can do my substitutions. I know R squared, X squared plus Y squared. 2 is 2. And uh, R cosine theta is X. All right, if, if you look at this next one, that is almost exactly like what we had here. <laughs> this is kind of a silly example. R squared equals R cosine theta. R squared is x squared plus y squared. R cosine theta is x. So here's four more examples for us to do, and I will start right here. So I have R equals five times secant of theta. So right off the bat, I don't have a straight secant um, substitution here to get into, into rectangular from polar. But I do know something about secant. I know that, that secant is the same as uh, 1 over cosine. So now I could write this as this, like 5 divided by cosine. So now, um, I don't like that in the denominator. I'm going to multiply both sides by cosine. So r times cosine of theta is equal to 5. Great, I know what our cosine theta is, it's x. x equals 5. So this r equals 5 secant theta is the same as this straight line, x equals 5. All right, next one, r equals 1 over 1 plus cosine theta. You know, I think first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by that denominator. Again, oftentimes when I have fractions, I just, I just don't want to have fractions anymore. So I multiply both sides by that denominator. And notice if I do it over here on the right, that divides out 201. And on the left, that r can get distributed into there. So r times 1 is r. r times r cosine theta is r cosine theta. That equals 1 over 1, which is, which is 1. All right, so now I have this r cosine theta. I know that's going to turn into an x. But that r... I really want it to be an r squared. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll, let me get this out of here. I'll subtract the r cosine theta from both sides because it's plus it. So I can subtract it. 1 minus r cosine theta. And now this r, like I said, if it's an r squared, I have this nice straight substitution. So in the past, what I've done is I've multiplied both sides by r. But notice if I do that here, it doesn't help me because that just gives me an r over here it just makes a mess over here so instead of by multiplying both sides by r i think i'll square both sides and now if i do that here i have an r squared which is just x squared plus y squared here i have a one minus oh that's an x x that quantity squared and i'm done i can leave it in that form i don't have to manipulate it out solve for y or anything like that all right let's do this next one just like the last problem, let's multiply both sides by that denominator. And if I do, it, it cancels out on the right, right? Divides out to a 1. So on the left, I'm going to have r times sine theta plus cosine theta. I can distribute that r into there. r sine theta plus r cosine theta. And it just falls out, right? r sine theta is a y. R cosine theta is an x. Y plus x equals 1. So if I were to graph this in polar coordinates, it's going to give me this straight line. All right, and last example. R equals r times sine theta. Now we just dealt with something just like this. Um, this r sine theta, we know that that's a y. I don't really want to mess that up because uh, then it would be something I have to deal with later. This r, I really want it to be an r squared so I could have my straight substitution. So it's tempting to try and multiply both sides by r, but then this side's messed up. Like it's not, won't do a nice substitution for you. So how about we square both sides? And if I square both sides, r squared is x squared plus y squared. r sine theta is a y, and that's squared. And there it is. So as you're going back and forth for these equations, from uh, from polar to rectangular, you're going to use these substitutions. And again, 
if you go if you're leaving polar there will not be an r or a theta or a sine or cosine left in the equation at all and if you're going for rectangular there will not be an x or a y left in it and that's a really good rule of thumb and one more thing for polars remember you wanted you do want to solve polars for r get r all alone for rectangular you can just leave them how they come all right message me if you have questions post up in the forum and uh good luck have fun with this